Greetings, we hope all is well. This is the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Senior and Friends. Genesis 1-1, KJV, states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And 2 Corinthians 5-7, KJV, states, For we walk by faith, not by sight. While Romans 10:17 KJV says, "So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." Which brings us to Hosea 4:6 KJV that states, "My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge." Mm-hmm. Welcome to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast. I am your host minister Larry Montgomery. Senior. The sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group. TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www.theauthorscorner.online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast. I'm your host, Elder Dr. Larry Montgomery Sr. This is my guest. Uh, George Blair, Brother George Blair. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening again. (laughs) And this week's topic is going to be on what will faith do? I haven't gotten back to um, (laughs) my original topic there, um, the bloodline. And the reason being is that I actually just published the book this morning. And so um, I put it back on the calendar for next week (laughs) to talk about part two, and we'll see how that goes. (laughs) But I think this this conversation on what faith will do should be very, very interesting. Um, Brother George, did you have a, a comment or you just want me to get started here? Well, I, I really love the um, I love the topic. Knowing that we're going to talk about faith for a few, you know, the, the time that we have here on the page. So I'll let you jump right into it, sir, and then I'll call. Okay. What faith will do? Uh, thankfully, the Bible contains a clear definition of faith in Hebrews 11 and 1. Amen. Which reads... Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Simply put, the biblical definition of faith is trusting in something you cannot explicitly prove. This definition contains two aspects. The first, believing something to be true. And secondly, actually relying on the fact that the something is true. I guess the best illustration of that would be a a chair. We all know what a chair is for when we recognize it. But until we sit in it, we really haven't proven to ourselves that is really a chair. Wow. Wow. (laughs) So when we talk about believing that Christ is God incarnate, who died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins and was resurrected is not enough. Even the demons believe that. In God and acknowledge those facts, we find that in James 2.19, we must personally and fully rely on the death of Christ as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We must sit in the chair of the salvation that Jesus Christ has provided 
This is saving grace. The faith God requires of us for salvation is belief in what the Bible says about who Jesus is and what he accomplished and fully trusting in Jesus for that salvation. We find that in Acts 16.31. Biblical faith is always accompanied by repentance. And we talked about that the other week. And you can find information on repentance in Matthew 21 and 32. So, faith does not apply only to salvation. It is equally applicable to the rest of the Christian life. We are to believe that the Bible says, and we are to obey it. We are to believe the promises of God, and we are to live accordingly. We are to agree with the truth of God's word, and we are to allow ourselves to be transformed by it. That's from Romans 12 and 2. Why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. You find that in Hebrews 11 and 6. Without faith, we cannot be saved. Without faith, the Christian life cannot be what God intends it to be. Find that in John 10 and 10. So, part of the purpose of this podcast comes from Romans 10 and 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So now we have started the conversation. I think another example of faith would be that warm blanket on a cold night. You know that you have this blanket, and if you don't pull it up over you, yes, sir. <laughs> you're not going to benefit from it. <laughs> you're just going to lay there cold. <laughs> so, Brother uh, George, tell me something. <laughs> what, what, what um. Which Bible were you reading from? What translation? King James. It was the King James? Yes. Because I'm I'm gonna read from the King James now, but it, it the wording is a little different. Mine said now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay. So Oh, I see. I like the word in. Mm -hmm. I like the word in. My, could you read your the first verse again in yours? Now faith is the assurance of the things assurance. hoped for. Okay. The conviction of things not seen. Okay. All right. I'll have to go back and look and see which version I got that from. NIV. Could be the NIV. Could have been. No, I mean all over the lot of research and stuff. New King James. New King. I'm sorry? It could be, is it the New King James version? Um, I didn't write that down. Okay. It, it's not really, it's not really necessary for you to really um, come mm -hmm. through it. Because it's basically the same thing, it's just that the wording is slightly yeah. different, but it is the same thing. Mm-hmm. The substance, the evidence, you know, it is there. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, as you mentioned earlier on, it is impossible for us to please God without faith. Mm -hmm. He said we must have faith for us to even come to him. We should have faith. And um, that's why we are reminded that he gave every man, every person was given a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. But for us to build on that faith now, we need, we need to fellowship one with another where we can, you know, build upon the, 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 the measure that we have, that we can take it to another level. Because the word tells us clearly that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So we need to we need to fellowship with one another and um, 
I think that will open up, open up our understanding. Well, with that, we, we have to understand that fellowshipping with one another um, also provides um, confirmation, if you will, of um, one's faith, because you're sharing what has happened to you. Mm -hmm. That's important because what has happened in your life is true to you. And what easier thing to talk about than what has happened to you. My faith has been constantly building over the years. It's yes. not something that just suddenly, you know, one day you wake up and you say, okay, well, you know, I heard about God and I heard about Jesus and, 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 and I believe. But what are you believing if you don't know anything? Someone could have spoken about what Jesus has done in their life. They say, oh, well, that's good. I, I, I understand that. You could have actually watched something happen in someone's life. One day things were like this, and the next day things were like that. And then they told you what had happened. And you can sit there and say that, I believe that. I, that, that happened because I saw it from the beginning to the end. But that's not your faith. Yes. That's their faith. You're just building yours from the outside. Now, when you sit in that chair and you see, you ask God for something, or you see God do something for you that you didn't know was coming, that's when you start, your faith starts to build and get stronger. I can say, you know, for myself, in the last week, last couple of weeks, I think I mentioned to you uh, privately that my son, who was in uh, the Dominican Republic now, um, was having some health issues, which he hadn't disclosed to me and my wife uh, for some whatever period of time he was feeling these, these issues, having some episodes, or whatever. And so finally, he had to go to the doctor to find out what was going on. And so the preliminary um, feedback was that there was a spot on his brain, you know. They didn't. They hadn't clarified what it was from or what it big, how big it was or whatever. But they said they had saw something. Okay, okay, fine. So me and my wife obviously went right into prayer, you know, for him. He believes in Christ, but he's not really all the way where we think he he could be or he should be. Put it that way. And so we prayed, we prayed, and we got confirmation about a week and a half later, you know, this week. Um, he called and he told us, you know, that they he went back into the doctor's office and they uh, took x-rays or whatever they did, and it's no longer there. So whatever they saw earlier was now gone. And that would only be God because, yes. you know, it, <clears throat> the prayers of a righteous person prevail, you know. And that tells me that when I ask God for something, if it's his will, I will get it. If it's not his will, I will understand yes. why I did not get it. And this is what you learn as you mature as a Christian, that sometimes you might want things that just God don't want you to have that because uh, you ain't ready for it uh -huh. or something else is going. He has something else uh, for you. Uh, so um, we talk about faith. There are a couple of examples in, in the Bible. Uh, one is, let me just pull that up, and I think everybody pretty much knows this one, uh, Abraham in the Old yes. Testament. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So you, you want to lay out the story, or should I lay it out? No, go ahead, sir. Okay. Abraham is mentioned several times in the Bible for some of the great things he accomplished, but Romans 4 says that he was saved because of his faith, and not because of works. Yes. Hebrews 11 says that he followed God even though he was not sure where he was going. Abraham is known as a man of faith who faithfully followed the Lord's leading. Yes. God gave Abraham the promise that the Redeemer would come through his family. Abraham and his wife Sarah were past 
childbearing age when Thank God, God. Gave, when God gave them a child who was named Isaac. Even though God had promised that Abraham's descendants would one day be a great nation, he asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son. Mm. And that was in uh, Genesis 22. So you, you have to understand, if you read that story, there were a, it wasn't just a conversation about Abraham's faith. To me, as I think about it today, it was a greater situation for Isaac. Because as the child, looking to your father, and I'm sure that they've had conversations about uh, God and, and Jesus, and, you know, about God at that particular time. And Abraham demonstrated how much he trusted God and so on and so forth. I'm sure he probably mentioned to Isaac that um, at his old age and his wife's old age, they wanted a child, a son, and God blessed them with it. And here you are, <laughs> Isaac, here you are. So God does answer, you know, prayers and he, he, you know, he keeps his word. But more to the point with Isaac, when God had commanded that Abraham offer Isaac as a burnt offering, Abraham got up that morning, right up, you know, it wasn't like, you know, let me wait a couple of days, Lord, and, and I'll get to it. No, he yes. got up the next day. <laughs> that morning, packed up whatever he needed, had a couple of servants go with him or whatever, part of the way to the place that God had already designated, left the servants behind for a minute and said, me and the boy are gonna go up the mountain and, and do what we have to do. Yes. On their way up the mountain, Isaac asked his father, well, where is the sacrifice? Hmm. And so, you know, Abraham's response was, well, God will provide. Right now. He knew what, who the sacrifice was. Yes. But he told him something else to not worry him, which is interesting. When they got there to the place where he had to build the altar, he tied up Isaac and placed him on the wood. Now, you know, Isaac, as soon as he saw his father with that rope, wrapping it around him, he figured out something was what was going on. But it doesn't say that he fought back or that he became belligerent or disobedient. Yes. The next point was when Abraham raised the knife, that's when the angel spoke to him. No. Then he noticed the ram in the bush. So Abraham already made up his mind. Something was going to get sacrificed because God asked me. God wanted it. Something got to go. <laughs> okay. My and, God. You know, I mean, that had to be total, total commitment to God. Because you wanted a son. He gave it to you. At a, you lived a whole hundred years. <laughs> lived a hundred years and didn't have a son. And that's the one thing you wanted. And he told you and gave it to you. Then he turned around and said, your descendants are going to be a nation. Wow. So of course, I'm sure Abraham is thinking to himself, I'm going to have a lot more kids or the one that I have is going to have a lot of kids. Okay. That's just normal. Then you turn around one day and God says, no, I want you to sacrifice him. No question. Wow. Got right up. So when we start talking about faith and the kind of faith that God is looking for to truly believe in him, can you earnestly sit to yourself and say, God, give me that cup. Let me drink from that cup. Let me do, test me, God. Let me show you how faithful, how much I care for you. I just have to fold up and cry and, and just bow my head and say, you might as well cut my head off now because I can't do that. 
I just, I just, I love my children. I love my wife. You know, he gave all of them to me. I just, well, I guess if God was standing here talking to me, I probably would have a different opinion. <laughs> but I showed, I'd be crying every minute of the way to try to figure out how to get up out of it. <laughs> But there are other stories in there, you know, and we're just going right now in the, in the uh, Old Testament. Uh, did you want to make a comment? Or, I mean, I want to hold you out. You see, when you have um, that relationship with the Lord, and you know it is, He's the one that is speaking to you. Mm. But again, we have to have that relationship that you can differentiate the voice of God. Mm -hmm. from other voices because you know you're going to hear other voices too mm -hmm. True. but it's to know the difference between what the Lord is saying unto you so that is something that we, we, we need to build we need to build that relationship with God I was still mm -hmm. speaking to my grandson a couple of minutes ago prior to coming on and I was just telling him about the same thing having a relationship with God that you can differentiate his voice when all the sound, all the rumbling that is going on around you. But you know it is him that is talking to you, telling you, make that left turn, make that right turn. <laughs> and we read in we read in um, the scriptures this um this story about Abraham and Isaac and going up. It it it, it is it is awesome, but I can just imagine hearing the story from Abraham himself. Mm -hmm. You know, what came into your mind at that time? Because it seems to me as if Abraham was totally sold out. Nothing could have changed his mind. Nothing could have convinced him. Nothing could mm -hmm. have deterred him. Mm -hmm. Because you notice in the scripture that it was mentioned where he must said something like this to his wife. He heard the voice of God and he just said, well, I'm just going. And then again, the word that he spoke. Because he tell, his, he tell the servant, okay, here come the point now where he had to tell the servant, stay here. Mm -hmm. But me and the lad is going up here and down to worship and we will be back. Mm -hmm. So it is telling us that we should speak positive words. All the words from our mouth. The Bible tells us that we should call the things though they be not. We don't see it, but call it. We can call mm -hmm. it into being. So I totally believe that and even in this story here, as it said, faith cometh by hearing. Yes. Yes, this increases my faith. Mm -hmm. It is recorded here for my benefit. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basking in it. <laughs> yes but it isn't an easy life no it's not easy you know but at the end of the day it's worth it because yeah. if it ain't god help us <laughs> we all gonna go to the same place when we die and if it ain't heaven it's not going to be happy <laughs> Well, as the scripture said again, God is a man. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. And he tells us who he is. And he tells us that, listen, I am. I am the I am. Mm -hmm. So if you choose me, he said, I make life and I make death. He tell us what the choices are and he even tell us, you choose this. Mm -hmm. I am the way. I was asking a question, you know, why no other, no other religious leader could come up with that line? Mm -hmm. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. So he's playing the telling you, and, it, and, and Jesus himself tells us again that many shall come in his name to the sea. Mm -hmm. That if, 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 if it was, if, he said, even the very elect, even the very elect, 
they will come and try to deceive you. So you have to you have to know what you know. You have to mm -hmm. know what you know and stand on it and know that listen, I am not. Nothing is gonna shake me. Nothing is gonna change my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am sold out for this. I was just telling my grandson, I am sold out. I used to hear my former bishop said, if this is not it. He said, I will hold on to this until that come. Mm -hmm. He's not letting go off of this. He's holding on to this until that come, if this is not it. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing the same thing. If this is not it, let whatever it is, let it come and catch me holding on to this. But I'm not <laughs> letting go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is worth hearing and saying to someone who really doesn't know or think they know. Because some people walk around here, they, they act like, well, you know, if they don't even ask themselves the question, why, are, why am I here? Mm -hmm. It's all about me. So whatever pleases me is, is what it is. And the, the sad part about that is if you're constantly looking to make yourself happy and to keep yourself happy, you never take the time to think about making someone else happy and seeing what joy you would get from making someone else happy, doing something that they couldn't do for themselves. You know, and, and, and that's a part of being a Christian too. You know, you, we're taught to love our neighbors even our enemies, you know, which is hard. It's a hard con concept because the word enemy tells you that this person is going to do whatever it is they can to hurt you, whether it trip you, knock you down, or kill you. Their goal is to hurt you. Yes. Hurt your family, hurt your job, whatever it is. That's all they're interested in. That's what's going to make them happy. And so here you are trying to be happy all the time. <laughs> and they're trying to be happy all the time. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That's your enemy. But we are told to, you know, love your enemy. You know? My God. That don't mean I got to trust you. That just means that, you know, if you do something that gets, and it's just me speaking, if you get out of hand, I've got to start dealing with you a different way, you know, and I'm not going to go out of my way for revenge because all I got to do is turn to God. Yes. His vengeance is worse than anything I could come up with, period. <laughs> you know, even if I thought to kill you, it ain't going to be half as bad as what God will do to you, you know, and the Bible tells you that he will punish you to the fourth generation. Wow. So if all you're thinking about is you, guess what? Your son, your grandson, your great-grandson, and your great-great-grandson are all going to suffer because you are all for you. My yeah. God. So, <laughs> you know. And this but, is serious. Very, very serious. Hmm. And a lot of times the uh, preachers won't tell you there's the good side and there's the bad side. Mm -hmm. And that bad side makes the good side look really, really good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you don't want to make God mad. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but you know, it's a choice that it's a choice that we make. We have we have choices. And it's what you choose. Mm -hmm. You know the Lord is he, he explained it to us and tell us exactly what the enemy came for. What is his purpose? And we see, we, we see, it. we see. It. But there are people that you're trying to reach out to people and, oh, you could have talked until thy kingdom come. <laughs> there are minds that are already made up. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, it is not his will that any should perish. But there are people who just said, well, hey, listen, it's all about me. It's my way. Mm -hmm. So 
which is which is sad when you when you look back at it and i'm talking about you know um, going to funerals and you're seeing people who have just left and what i might know about you you know <laughs> i'm not going to put your business in the street mm -hmm. at that point in time but i just wonder you know what were you thinking all of this time whatever time he gave you to be here mm. was it all about you only <laughs> you know did you ever think that it could be something different things could be better you could still My be God. all about yourself but you could still be a better person you know you could still be a better person you know yeah I, I, you know I, I'm, I'm not i'm not interested in stepping on your toe but i sure enough don't want you to step on mine you know but you know if i walk around here just stepped on everybody else's foot and don't expect mine to ever get stepped on that's that's a mistake that's clearly a mistake no mm. <laughs> that's all i got <laughs> that's where we are that's where we are sir but in all of this our job is to tell people you know it's just to follow through with the great commission mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go and it doesn't have to be like you're preaching to people when you talk no. to them about no. God. You know, I, I was with my barber the other day. And I usually don't say much when I'm sitting in a chair, first off, because I want them to focus, you know. <laughs> and secondly, because my hearing aids don't pick up everything. So I don't, you don't want to have that, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say conversation, you know? But I did mention to him briefly that I was kind of uh, struggling with, uh, with, this the passing of my brother-in-law uh, knowing that um he may not have given his life to christ or haven't even recognized or been baptized mm. and so i hear the stories about how he treated his wife and so on and so forth and this is all secondhand so i don't know if it's true or not i just you know you, you hear it you know i'm not going out looking for it but you hear it and so I look, I look at him and I'm saying like, you know, gee, almost 80 years old. And this is what people think of you. This oh. is how you lived your life. And now here it is at the end. Um, and like I said, I think he had um, dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever that might be. So mm. it came a time when you, when you pretty much lost control of your mind. And it didn't dawn on you that, yo, hey, I, maybe I should think things a little differently for these last few minutes or whatever little bit of time I have left, you know? Yes. And the only one would know that right now is God. He's the only yes, one who would know, you say it to somebody else, you know? And that's kind of the thing about being baptized. You tell the world <laughs> that, mm. you, that you're committed to him. <laughs> So, uh, oh my God. Yeah. It is what it is. Well, Sir Larry, I don't. When I leave here, I would like to know that if it's even one person, one life, one person that can say, you know, this man, this man speak to me, this man, because of this person, my life has been changed. I mm. was going this way, but now I'm going that way. Mm -hmm. I turn mm -hmm. away from the things that I used to do, the places that I used to go because of this person. Mm -hmm. Somebody did it to me and I want to just pass it on to somebody else. There you go. There you go. Just one. You cannot be selfish if it's even one. Just one. <laughs> because if each one get one, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It would take a lot of pressure off of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hopefully when you when you find that one or they find you, that when they see the benefit of the change, that they'll be encouraged Yes. to do it again, to pass it on, Yes. to try to help yeah. someone else. 
you know, and that's a good thing. So next week, I'm going to try to be prepared to talk about the bloodline part two. I really don't think I have any excuse unless God leads me a different way. Okay, <laughs> so, sir. All right. Um, let me put on my commercial and close, and then I'll chat with you a little bit after. Okay. Okay. People understand the profound mystery behind Jesus' bloodline. Stop guessing and discover the truth in bloodline by Dr. Larry Montgomery, Sr. Bloodline by Dr. Larry Montgomery Sr. is a game changer. After years of casually reading the Bible, Dr. Montgomery was struck by a question. Why was Jesus born into mankind? Beyond the familiar story of sin and salvation, there lies a deeper mystery. God had countless ways to mend the broken relationship with humanity, but he chose the most remarkable path, sending his son into our world to live, suffer and die. The question then arose, how could the created create its creator? This intriguing question led to the insightful research and writing of Bloodline. Explore the profound implications of Jesus' lineage and uncover truths that will inspire and enlighten you. Available now on Amazon and at theauthorscorner.online. Order your copy today. Thanks and God bless. Amen. Thanks be to God. You have been listening to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Sr. and Friends. Join us again next time as we continue to labor in this vineyard with an eye towards bringing the words of God to those who are interested. Remember, the sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www. The Author's Corner. Online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. May God continue to bless you and yours until next time. God bless.